Okay, so this is Ben Shapiro on Candace Owens' recent commentary about the Israel-Palestine conflict. I want you guys to hear this. Yes, uh, the, the question is about Candace Owens. I think her behavior during this administration. I think that her faux sophistication on these particular issues has been ridiculous. It's not faux sophistication, it's ridiculous. Everybody can see the moves that she's making, the things that she's saying, and everybody can distract you all. Okay, so apparently he says that, yeah, she still works for my company, right? He And he said that he thinks that her comments were disgraceful. Now, here's the thing. If you follow my content, you already know I'm not a fan of Candace Owens. I'm not a fan of The Daily Wire. Um, I think that, you know, if you're somebody transitioning from political parties you know, you're kind of like, okay, I don't really rock with this side that I've been sort of indoctrinated into being on. So it's natural to go on to the other side. And so I went on to the other side and, and you know, obviously you hear people making points um, to kind of things that you observe and you can sort of, you know, resonate with these people because they're speaking on the points that you have observed too. But then you realize that many people on the conservative side of the aisle, you know, they're just talking heads. They're not, they're really good at taking the contents and the logics of, of true, real, organic intellectuals and taking it and then just regurgitating it as if they are also an intellectual, right? Candace Owens does it with Thomas Sowell, right? And, and to Thomas Sowell's credit, a lot of Black conservatives gravitate towards um, his work and his, his reasoning on things, because it's just very hard to refute Thomas Sowell, even though I will say that there are certain perspectives of Thomas Sowell that I do find to be more conservative minded in a narrow lens. Um, and, and, and obviously, you know, I'm not going to say that everything that Thomas Sowell has said, I agree with just because, you know, as I dive into things deeper on my, my own understanding, and, and, and observations, you know, I can see that many of these arguments um, that even are on the conservative side that may have valid talking points, they're still presented in a narrow way. And that is why the conservatives have always failed at getting black Americans to really come over because they don't really resonate to the true reality of, of, of what the arguments are on the liberal side. So, you know, off that, though, you know, I felt like, you know, Candace Owens and the Daily Wire were, you know, it, it were really this interesting mix of people because they're all just ambitious. We're, 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 we're capitalist people. We believe in free markets. whoop de whoop de whoop get it how you live it, right? And Candace Owens, you know, she sort of got her rise by jumping on a Trump train Right. But then also uh, talking about black people in a manner in which ignorant white people wanted to hear a black person talk about black people in. So that's how she really got her audience. When you looked at a lot of individuals who follow Candace Owens, not all of them, but many of them, they were very ignorant people who just needed to hear a black person dog black people or make points that were more inflammatory than solutions based or pragmatic. So that's what you got with Candace Owens, right? And Candace Owens, as long as she stayed in her lane, she would probably always get along with the Daily Wire. But the minute she started going outside of her lane, the minute she started supporting things that were, to me, against the core principles of that structure over there, I knew she was going to have problems. And, you know, Ben Shapiro, to me, I think that, you know, he is smart, but he's also very privileged. He, he's, he's comes from legacy wealth. And so he, you know, has the money to build this empire, you know, presenting himself and anyone that he brings on his platform as this intellectual, these intellectual people that are just highly intelligent. And really, they're, they're not. 
They're just really regurgitating talking points repetitively, right? Which they are valid talking points, right? But anybody can regurgitate them. And so, you know, I think your your regular non-Ben Shapiro conservative who can listen to these talking points and even have them, you know, on their lips and every day can say, you know, this is not really profound. This is just really basic observation that people have been saying for decades in America, especially. But, you know, I say that to say that when that Kanye thing happened with um, her Con- Candace and Kanye kind of joining with the White Lives Matter and then Kanye going off on Jewish people and Candace defending what he might have meant, right? She kind of stepped out of her lane then. And I think that <clears throat> she was, she probably stuck, she tried to come off as if she stuck to her grounds. But at the end of the day, Candace ended up backing off of that Kanye thing because obviously she was being considerate of her friends at the Daily Wire, but really that's not an argument that she wants to have, especially with somebody like Ben Shapiro, who I I truly do believe that Ben and Candace just do not get along, but Ben understands from a business perspective that Candace Owens drives an audience. If Candace Owens were to divorce the Daily Wire, he probably doesn't even understand what that would mean for the Daily Wire because he's going to have to have Matt, uh, Matt Walsh definitely come harder with something to get them viewership, right? Matthew knows, you know, he can keep bringing the spiritual mediums and all these other people on, right? But at the end of the day, Ben Shapiro understands from a business perspective, it would hurt the Daily Wire if he were to 86 Candace Owens, right? So, you know, it's going to be, I'm pretty sure he is just sitting there brewing in his feelings right now about what to do with this girl. I mean, that, I mean, because, you know, the way they, and, and I'm pretty sure Candace is brewing in her feelings about what to do with this relationship because, I mean, he's on there calling her, saying that, you know, her perspectives are disgraceful. And I even feel like he questioned her intelligence. And the one thing I I will say about women like Candace Owens, and which I do respect about this because I am like that too, is we do not like people questioning our intelligence, right? Right. Because, you know, a lot of times when you have worked hard very intrinsically to to acquire the knowledge that you have, right, um, in my case, it's like I will not let anybody just sit there and try to dumb me down because they see a black face on me. And that's a note to you, LinkedIn, too, you know. But I don't let people dumb me down because they see see a black face on me. And and, and and I get hyper offended when people think that they can. That's when, you know, I might have to read you who you are in that moment. If you question my intelligence on things, you can say I don't agree with you, blah, blah, blah. But the minute you start bringing in that soft bigotry questioning my intelligence, that is when you have literally crossed the line. But I feel like Ben Shapiro probably crossed the line even saying that about her publicly. So it, I, like, I'm pretty sure the dynamics at the Daily Wire is just interesting right now. I would not be surprised if, you know, we saw a separation of Candace Owens and the Daily Wire. And he also made another statement that I thought was interesting, too where he was like, she knows um, what she's doing, what, what, what games, you know, she's... So it seems like Ben Shapiro feels like Candace Owens, her comments, you know, about the Israel-Palestine conflict, he believes that they're more of a chess move for her. He feel, like It sounds like he thinks that she's playing chess. So I think that <clears throat> Candace Owens is probably, like, Candace Owens probably understands that at this point in her career and her, and in her her, uh, social media influence and power, she doesn't necessarily need the Daily Wire. And actually, she could probably make more money, possibly, on her own versus having that arm of the Daily Wire. I think, if anything, you know, you, 
that Steven Crowder thing probably still was in the back of her mind. Like, did they really offer Steven Crowder X, Y, and Z 50 million? And, and I'm Candace Owens, and I'm helping them drive their viewership, you know, and keep people interested in their subscriptions and stuff like that. Interesting. I'm not a fan of the Daily Wire. I think, you know, like they're broken intellectuals. They're 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 regurgitators of of real intellectuals. And they use a lot of liberal like passions to validate their feelings, your their positions. You know what I mean? They use a lot of animated sarcasm unnecessarily sometimes too to really well, I forgot what are they called? Sophist. That's they they have a very they they're very sophist. You know, look that up. You know, these people are just like so intellectually. I'm so smart. I'm so educated, and I know all of this information. And it's like, yeah, you can regurgitate a lot of information. That's congratulations, congratulations. But anyways. Let me know what you guys think about this interesting conflict. You know, when you have groups like the Daily Wire and you, for the most part, they're all singing to the same tune. They cover almost the same thing on their shows, you know. Um, but the coverage of this recent conflict overseas is definitely one that has divided the nation. It's even divided the nations that are in conflict right now, obviously. And... Um, I don't know. It seems like, you know, this was probably one conversation if Candace Owens was like, I need, I want to stay at the Daily Wire. I want to exist there. I, I, I think this was one of those conversations that she probably should have stayed away from. It definitely seems like Candace should have stayed away from this conversation. Let me know what you guys think. Do you feel like Candace you know, she. this is her job to talk about her perspective on world events. And this is a conversation that she had to write and put her perspective on, you know, or do you guys believe that, you know, considering the sensitivity of the topics and the people that she works with, maybe she should have stayed away from it. Let me know you guys' opinion and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Bye.